Hello friends and welcome to my video. My name is Kian Aghani and in this video I'm going to teach you how to write a human subroutine for a problem containing geometric nonlinearity. First, I must say that I'm not focusing on the basics such as linking Abacus with Fortran, how to solve an elastic problem and etc. I however will give you some hints along the way. Furthermore, I've already written the code to shorten the video and concentrate on explaining. Nonetheless, I will illustrate every detail. So, let's, let's get, get down, down to the business. business. First, we begin with the fundamentals. The equation for solving elastic study problems is R equals KU, in which R is the external force vector, K is the initial elastic stiffness matrix generated from material matrix, and U is the unknown nodal displacement vector. So this is quite straightforward. In general problems, the equation is almost the same, but the K is the current stiffness matrix. Although this equation might seem simple and straightforward, we cannot solve it directly. The reason is related to the fact that under loading, the volume is changing, and therefore we cannot integrate on it to obtain the K matrix. Hence, we have to approximate utilizing approximation from previous known configuration like uh, previous step or previous increment, we can solve this. Nevertheless, we need to use incremental iterative solutions like newton raphson scheme. So the former equation is transformed into this one. The f is added to the equation and u is transformed to delta u. F is the internal force vector corresponding to nodal stresses, and delta U is the increment of nodal displacement vector. After we got the delta U, we can generate the total nodal displacements. To solve this equation, we need to use a proper convergence criterion. We can use the delta U definition or the residual force definition. For most of the problems, these two equations um, generate a similar result. So Abacus UMAT demands two things from us. First, the DDSTD matrix or so-called the consistent Jacobian matrix and proper definition for stress increment or stress rate. For elastic problem, the DDSTD matrix for isotropic material can be generated from Lamas equation and a Fortran code for generating the total stresses is like um, this one in which the DDSTD multiplied by D strand is the stress rate. However, we cannot use this equation for a problem encompassing geometric nonlinearity. So I've gotten a screenshot from the Abacus documentation in which it, it states that we need to define this equation uh, for uh, solving these kinds of problem in which J sigma is the Khrushchev stress, C is the material matrix, D is the rate of deformation, and W is the spin tensor. This uh, D and W are generated from the F which is the deformation gradient, and J is the determinant of the F. So we need to uh, define this equation into our UMAT. So how we can do that? Lucky for us, Abacus provided, provides us with F at the start of an increment and at the, F, uh, and, and at the end of an increment. So uh, as you can see, the problem is reduced into defining D and W. First, I must say that this double dot here means the tensor 
product. And the variation here means the increments. So uh, Abacus uses incremental solutions, so we uh, do not need to worry about these variations. So how we can get the D and W? Here is the solution. We have something that is called velocity gradient. Uh, and it is defined by f dot and f inverse. Due to mathematical trace of L, uh, it can be written in the form of D uh, added by W. Uh, D is the symmetric part of L and W is the skew symmetric part of L. So as you can see, we can define the D and W tensors. But there is a complication uh, in this way. Since Abacus doesn't provide us with F dot and F inverse or L transpose. So we have to write our own Fortran code for this one. The summary of our PowerPoint is uh, we need to define proper definition for material matrix C. If the material is in plasticity, uh, we need to uh, define it proper, uh, properly. We need to obtain the inverse and rate of deformation gradient, F dot and F inverse. Uh, and from it, we need to uh, obtain the L tensor. Having L tensor, we can uh, calculate the D and W tensors. Uh, at the end, we need to calculate the uh, stress rate, delta sigma, in a proper way. And uh, we need to use proper integration scheme like the one I stated here, but uh, complex versions can be implement, implemented also. Now that we know the theory behind our UMAT, we can, uh, read, uh, we can write it down ourselves. So this is my main UMAT file. As you can see, this is the format of the UMAT, which I copied from Abacus documentation also the dimensions. There is an important point here. Since the formation gradient is being used for stress calculations, we don't need to rotate the stresses, contrary to the material plasticity subroutines. Then we have some constants and extra dimensions. Note that we are utilizing the F matrix, which is a 3 by 3 matrix. Hence, all these matrices are 3 by 3. For example, deformation gradient inverse, rate of deformation gradient, identity matrix, velocity gradient, velocity gradient, transpose, and etc. I've assumed elastic isotropic material, therefore I only uh, need two inputs. Next, determining zero matrices for my parameters and DDSTD matrix. I presume that you all know the coding. Here, I use a state Vs for stresses, which store the input for only one increment. This is because I want to use my own integration rule. Then the identity matrix and shear moduli and lamez coefficient. I've copied these from Abacus documentation example. Then we form the DDSTD elastic matrix since it's necessary. From here, our main calculations commence. We need F dot and F inverse to obtain the velocity gradient. So I use this relation for F dot deformation gradient at the end of the increment minus deformation gradient at the beginning of the increment on the top of the fraction and d time on the bottom of the fraction. Note that d time must be positive. Then I used k inverse subroutine to obtain deformation gradient inverse. Having gotten the f dot and f inverse, we can obtain the velocity gradient. Then we can use these relations to obtain D and W tensors. As you can see, the relations are similar. So 
This is for uh, D matrix half V plus V transpose and for spin matrix half V minus V transpose. Now that we have D and W matrices, we can obtain the stress rate. This equation that I showed before. First, we need the tensor product of C and D. I used uh, this loop for uh, the tensor product. You can write it in your own preferred way. Then we need W multiplied by sigma and sigma multiplied by W. I used the KMLT subroutine for these. The input is a spin tensor and stresses and the output is WS tensor. And for SW, the uh, process is the same. Just beware of the inputs. Now we can form the stress rate. As you can see, this is the exact relation that I shown you here. C double dot D plus W sigma minus sigma W. This is the exact relation. Then I can integrate. So now I so now I have obtained the new stresses. Now we must store these stresses for stress calculations and for the next step. First, a loop to uh, abacus and the loop for state Vs to be used for next increment. As I said prior to this uh, UMET file, we must copy our uh, extra subroutines to the end of our UMET file. As you can see there, I copied the K-inver, K-MLT, K-trace and K-trans uh, to the end of my main UMET file. So, this concludes our UMAT. Next, I'm going to show you how we can use it in Abacus. The video continues with Abacus CAE illustration. I've already prepared an example containing a body under shear deformation. The material is in elastic range, as you can see it here. In the step module, the NLG arm is on. The type of integration I use is susceptible to time incrementation. Therefore, use a small amount for initial and maximum time increments. Also, I've used the C3D8 in elements with full integration. This model will serve as our benchmark. I made a copy and renamed it to UMAT. As you can see it here. In property, we use user material for our constants and depth. Part. Since we have six sources, we put six here. Furthermore, make sure you enable the STVs in a step module in order to calculate our state Vs in every increment. In the end, in job module, input the file address in job. Um, this is my main UMET file with .4 format. So let's review the results. As seen here, the results are similar and the ignorable error is related to the different algorithms that we used. For example, S in X direction and STV1 are identical for this problem. Also, the deformation can be seen here, which is totally identical.
So, this concludes our video. If you have found this video useful, please support me by subscribing and liking my video. Also, I want to thank the Panzoid.com for the amazing logos. Take care.